And I usually uh, don't buy this kind, but they didn't have, this is just snap beans. They didn't have uh, half runners or pole beans. So you just take, cut the ends off. You ha sometimes these is getting a little squishy. If they're fresh, good and fresh, you don't have to cut them, but I'm having to cut these because they not real good and fresh now. I think they froze in the refrigerator. And you just snap these till you get them all done. And then you wash them and and just break them up and put every past pieces you like. I usually do mine about an inch or so. It doesn't matter. Some people cook them whole. It just, you can do them however you want to. Some people don't cook them very long, but I cook them for about, about three, two and a half or three hours. I like beans cooked really a long time, and I put uh, either fat back or bacon drippings. I usually just put dr bacon drippings in mine. And that, um, I like mine to just really cook good. Some people don't cook them but maybe 15, 20 minutes, but that leaves them scrunchy. And I want them to cook good and done. Okay, wash them. Wash them good. If you want to learn to be a good cook, you just do it by trial and error. <laughs> Try different things and if it's a recipe you don't like, or something else, if it's got something in it you don't like, leave it out. but it don't need two cups. I'm going to cup and a half. Cup and a half of water. Cup and a half of water. And about a teaspoonful of salt. Don't put it on the stove. Shortening. I add bacon drippings. I always save your bacon drippings so you can have it to cook with. I strain my bacon drippings when I take it out. And I'm going to use about two tablespoonfuls of bacon drippings in that. Turn them on high till they start to boil. When they start to boil, turn them down. Where they just cook on like on simmer. And then I cook them about three hours, two and a half or three hours. But leave them on high till they start to boil. When they start to boil, turn it down to if it's electric stove where, it, where it's got numbers on it. I turn it down to about a three. So it's a little lower than a medium, I guess, and let them cook. That way you know. But if they get too dry, you can add more water. But I cook all the water out. I don't like juicy beans. I, I cook all the water out. And you don't pour it off. You cook it out because if you poured it off, you'd pour out all your seasoning. So you just cook it till you get the uh, water cooked out of them. But if if they get too dry before they get done, you can add some more hot water to it. That was what I was going to ask. Do you add more water at add any point? Add more water if, they, if they're not done and the water gets cooked out. 
add more water, but I always add hot water. I don't add, add cold. I just stick me some water in the microwave and heat it up to a boiling point and pour it in there. So if you heat it on three, or you got it running on three, you set it on three for about two hours and you just yeah. keep an eye on it and make sure they don't burn. Yeah. But I, as soon as they start, and I put it on high until they start to boil, then I turn them down. Right. Now this is how they look when they finish. You see there's no water in there. Watch a little bit there, that's grease. But that got all the water cooked out and that's the way they'll look. And how long were those cooked? And these were cooked about three hours. It means that fresh beans are better, but you can use frozen ones if you have to. Fresh said, beans are better when you can get them. These are high runners. Oh, okay. And come you said those were frozen. Yeah, these came out of the garden. <laughs> these had been frozen in water. They was not just frozen in a bag. I froze them in a pot of in water. Now, uh, this is a pork roast, and all I did was wash the pork roast, this is a boneless, and I put it, you can cook this different ways, but I put this in a cooking bag and poured a can of French onion soup, poured a can of French onion soup over it, put it in a bag, and I also put a piece of foil over it so it won't get too brown on the top and put it in the oven and baked it on 300 for three hours or three and a half hours, something like that. And you cooked it in that bag? I cooked it in this bag with, with a can of French onion soup poured over it. But you can cook it, you can put it, the roast into a, like a corn and wire dish or anything that would go in the oven with a lid on it. You can put it in that or you can Watch just... Uh, you can just wrap it in um, aluminum foil, heavy aluminum foil. Just wrap it up in a heavy aluminum foil. Or if you work, you can stick it in a, a slow cooker and pour the soup over it and uh, cook it like eight hours at a time until you put it on before you leave to work in the morning. And when you get home, put it on low and it'll be done when you get home in a slow cooker. And if you want to do a beef roast, do it the same way. Just I do a beef roast exactly the same as a pork roast, but then in a beef roast, if you want to cook it in a slow co uh, cooker, you could also put some potatoes and onions and carrots around it if you want to do that, and you'll have a whole meal when you get home. You do that in a slow cooker. But I always use I always use the French onion soup, or you can use that uh, uh, onion soup that's in a dry soup mix if you want to do that and use a cup of water. Put dry soup mix, but I just use the French onion in a can. Isn't that bag a turkey roasting bag? That's a, yeah. Unless no, it's it's like that. It's just a cooking bag, but it's not as big as a turkey bag. It's just a cooking bag, but it's it cooks quicker in a bag and stays a little bit more moist in a bag. And then you can take this uh, this juice that's in there if you want gravy, and put you. Um, like a, a little bit of uh, margarine in a pan, put some flour in it and brown it just a little bit and then pour this juice in there and use it for a gravy to go over it. Hmm. Hey, you want me to show you how to make the gravy? Yeah, that's good. Make the gravy. We'll just do some gravy to go with it. Roast was a four pound roast, a little bit over four pound, and I cooked it on 300 degrees for three hours with a can of soup, can of French onion soup poured over it. That's all I did to it. it. And a, a corn and ware dish with the lid on it and stick it in the oven or you can wrap it in foil. I cooked that in a cooking bag or you can cook it in a slow cooker, put it on in the morning and let it cook for like eight hours. If you're doing this in recipes, they all have a lot of extra added stuff that I don't see any point in. I don't think it changes your taste all that much. 
and they just want to make it complicated. Cooking's really simple. <laughs> it's just people make it complicated and they don't need to be. Process that we've uh, go ahead. Heap, heaping tablespoon of flour. Plain flour. And then here's the self rising. It don't matter what. Self rising flour. So this is the part of the process I wouldn't, even though you, you could say how to do it, but until you until you see it done, it doesn't always make sense. You ain't telling them how to do it. Well, I didn't see how to do it. <laughs> Wilson says you're supposed to do this real slow, but I don't ever have time to do it real slow, so I just do it in a hurry. You just sort of brown this flour a little bit. And so it's a quick little bit and it makes it thicker sweet. You don't want a real thick gravy to go over it. You can make this as thick or as thin as you want it. I like it kind of thin to go over the roast. If this gets cold, we'll heat it up in the microwave before we go to eat it. There was a technique there that, I don't know if you caught it, playing in slow motion, picked, spooned it to see what, how much it ran off the spoon and then added more. Mm -hmm. Right there. Thickness that you want it. 
How much do you think you added, maybe? How much of that do you think you added for a stick of mm. butter there? About two cups, maybe? Three cups? A broth. Mm-hmm. I guess I added about a cup and a half. This was measuring time, let's see. She put in a half stick of butter. Half stick of butter. Less, and if you want it thinner, you add more. You can tell by looking at it, that is about as thick as you would like it on your roast. That's pretty good to me. Okay. I'm going to peel potatoes to go with this meal. I'm not. I don't think I'll cream these. I'm just going to cook them down. You can do parsley potatoes for people that like parsley. I love parsley potatoes, but everybody don't like parsley in them, so I won't put parsley in these. But I've got fresh parsley, and I chop fresh parsley and do it just like I'm going to do these, except I'm not going to put it in there tonight. But you can use cream potatoes to go with this and use you have your gravy to go on your cream potatoes. That'd be good. All right. Tell me now we're about to cook and wear. Cookware. Iron iron cookware for cooks better than anything for taste to me. You can tell the difference if it's cooked in an iron pot or iron skillet than if it's cooked in anything else. Uh cookware that's um, that non-stick if you're frying it won't absorb nearly as much grease though as uh, like stainless steel if you cook it in one that's uh, like a Teflon lining something you're frying it won't absorb as much grease like if you're frying apple pies if you cook it in one that's that non-stick it won't absorb the grease like it does in one if you cook it in a in a stainless steel, which is healthier, I guess. I wouldn't have known that. I didn't know it to begin with, but I've just found that out by doing it. I had never read where it did that, but I, when I cook, I found it out that it does. It makes a difference. In that Dillard cookbook, you'll find it tells you a lot of things about what you cook in. Wash your potatoes for you after you get them peeled, before you cut them up. That's easier than having to wash them after you cut them up. If you want to cream potatoes, if you cut them up in thinner slices, they'll cook quicker. And I'm not creaming these, but if you want them to cook real quick, just cut them in thinner slices and they'll cook real quick. We're just going to cook these and put butter in them and cook them down until they get the water cooked out of them. That's one of my favorite ways anyway. But that's, we don't, we're trying to save a little time. And just about cover. The bowl and then I put butter in it and salt. Well, I put salt in when I dry my hands. How much that's? This way, the only way I can tell how much I'm putting in there. 
and then I can measure it in my spoon.